and instantly I knew intuitively, I was like, that's the exact shape of the moon that was in my coffee cup. And what we'd been speaking about was really profound. And I was like, ah, this is the moment that she was referring to, that something would click into place. Hello everyone, Charlie here from the Projector Movement. I'm here in Bali at the moment, more specifically Uluwatu, down the bottom on the west coast of Bali. And I wanted to share with you a little bit about the gift of being a projector and some things that you can start to unravel and start to peel back the layers within your own psyche, within reality and some of the gifts that can be shown as projectors. So as a projector, you're connected to the unmanifested world. You're connected to source energy. You know, there's a veil between this material world and the non-material world. When we die, do we actually die? There's unseen realms and projectors have been here, sent here 250 years ago roughly, to reconnect this material world back to the truth, back to something far greater than this material things that humanity has got stuck in. We've got stuck in the pleasure of the material world. We've got stuck in the pain of the material world. We've got stuck in our ego, in our identity, in our beliefs, in our thoughts. When we all come from oneness we all come from this ocean of beingness of nothingness and projectors in a way are here with an access to that to bring humanity back home so therefore us as projectors we have a beautiful access point into the unseen realms into synchronicities into being guided being shown if we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, we will be able to, to tap into something beyond just logic or if I can't see it, it's not real. You know, these type of belief patterns that society is coming from. But we're moving into a totally different world and projectors are here to seed in that new world and you're here to bring your inner world out and if you do that in an aligned way with your gifts, with your purpose, with your passion, then invitations will come your way, recognition will come your way, and ultimately success will come your way in all areas of life. I wanted to share a personal story that I was piecing together yesterday, and there's just there's multiple elements, and you know, it might be a little far-fetched, it might be... Um, Depends, you know, it depends where you're listening from. But for me, it was um, beautifully orchestrated and I could see how life was, was moving, guiding, um, teaching. So a couple of months ago, I had a coffee cup reading with this amazing woman in Australia, Melbourne. And a friend of mine had one previously and, you know, he'd shared oh, multiple things that actually, you know, come true. This is more a fortune teller predictor that you, you drink some of the coffee with your intention. You flip it over, you hold it, you take it up, and then you can look at how the coffee powder has formulated in the cup. And it's, a, it's an art. And she's been doing it since she was seven years old and maybe she was 60 years at this stage. And multiple things she said actually had already come true over the last couple of months. And I was like, wow, she said that, she said that, she said that, like this is, this is quite fascinating. And yesterday there was a little moon in my coffee cup, you know, there was multiple things, say 30 different elements that she focused in on in terms of past, present, future, different things. But there was this little moon and she was like, you know, at this moon, something will come through. And yesterday I was sharing with Sarah some of the things that have been going on in my reality that I've been seeing, which I'll share about here. 
And at the same time, this was at like 3 p.m. in the daytime in Bali. And at the same time, Sarah goes, whoa, look at that moon. And instantly I knew intuitively, I was like, that's the exact shape of the moon that was in my coffee cup. And what we'd been speaking about was really profound. And I was like, ah, this is the moment that she was referring to, that something would click into place. Anyway, this is going to get a little interesting for some, maybe for others, not interesting at all. But I was sharing with Sarah, like there's been this uh, dynamic between, I, I've i always felt, you know, physical illness, um, even if it's an impact injury or whatever, there's always a psychosomatic, emotional, spiritual connection at the root. And... So I'm always looking, you know, at times for the deeper meaning or if something happens, oh, what, what does that actually mean? Or, you know, let's say back in California in Joshua Tree, I go for a walk and I see eight coyotes. I'm going to be like, oh, what does the coyote mean? What, what medicine is that actually teaching me and bringing in? So anyway, something had been happening, you know, the, the coffee cup reader had that and... Then in Bali, there's been this dynamic going on um, metaphorically, but also real. And in Sarah's coffee cup, there was a symbol of a snake. So this was like the initial, like there was like a snake and then um, come to Bali. And so it's this dynamic between the frog and the snake. And to try and piece it together as best as I can for you but uh, so in Ubud randomly in our room I like walk past and there's like this frog like sitting on the balcony it's like it can't really get up there like it doesn't fully make sense how a frog could be here and I was like whoa and I saw this frog and Sarah didn't really see it she saw something jump and she thought it was like a bug or something I'm like no it was like a full frog like I saw it and I was like, wow, what does the frog mean? What does the frog mean? So I was tracking that. Then go back about uh, two weeks ago, I see a snake here where we're staying. And I just see it out of the corner of my eye. It's a very thin and it sort of just goes, and I was like, that was a snake. So there's a frog and there's a snake. And then about five days ago, I'm doing some breath work, cold plunging with a guy here from the resort and another guy. And he hears this noise like a and he's like, that's a frog being eaten by a snake. And I'm like, no. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like we walk down this path and I look and there's this snake. It's like thin, like eating, like with its mouth around a frog. And I'm like, that's so intense. I was like, okay. And the other two guys are like, oh, that's amazing. I'm going to like go back and film it. And I was just like, oh, wow, that's like pretty intense. And within five seconds, they got their phones, went back and it had gone. So like I saw this thing and it was like, and at this stage I wasn't fully tracking like the frog and the snake. Like, But then it was like, boom the snake like eating the frog and then a few days ago I go to sort of a, a secret beach here in Uluwatu it's sort of it's not fully secret but it's you know no one really goes there you have to walk down like 20 minutes all the way down and I do a prayer and say thank you to the land and I used to live in Bali uh, about six years ago and I wasn't as connected to the unseen world back then as I am now and I wasn't as connected to prayer to the ancestors to ceremony to respecting the land that we walk upon The door just creaked open. What am I going to mean of it? 
Now we can take it a bit too far if we start making meaning out of everything. But when something starts to come through. Anyway, uh, me and my... So I did a prayer on the land just thanking the land because I was coming onto the land, which not many people go here in Bali. Within a couple of minutes, a native Balinese man comes running up to me and he's like, oh, I want to show you these healing plants come and i'm just like okay that's like super super random like i've done this prayer like he didn't see me i kept walking for a couple of minutes and then all of a sudden he's like no like follow me follow me follow me so like going into the forest and he's pointing out these specific healing plants and anyway so that was that and then i'm coming back up and i remember about six years previously me and my ex-partner did a photo shoot around this land and in that moment I was guided to apologize for that because I was just a little bit ignorant around just going onto indigenous land that is not native to my own and even if it's just lots of photos in a way that's you know taking from the land So, I apologized for that. And anyway, get up, get back on my scooter, driving home. And I see this uh, water sort of thing creeping across the road. I'm like going decently fast, but it's sort of coming across. And it literally goes in front, just like a stream of water. And I like run over it like this. Anyway, my mind is like... Then it started to piece together something. I wasn't really thinking of it, but I was in a bit of like that unseen world a little bit. Um, and I was like, I just cut, cut the head off the snake. <laughs> and I was like, anyway. Then, yesterday, I'm doing yoga and I leave to go to the bathroom and I walk back to our it's like a you know 20 second walk open the door and I hear this like thunk, and I look behind and there's a frog like that is literally fallen as I've walked through this frog has fallen poof, on the ground and I'm just like oh what is going on there's something between this snake and this frog and Going back the previous night, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, go to the bathroom. You know, this isn't, I'm not, I'm not normally like this, like, oh, this is happening or what does this mean or oh, this is this animal, you know, I'm, I'm pretty grounded and here as well. But for whatever reason, sometimes when maybe the veil's a little thinner, I start to, you know, tap in. I do have gate 57, the gate of intuitive clarity. I've got seven open centers, I'm a splenic projector, Scorpio moon, you know, I do have an intuitive capacity. And I go to the bathroom and I'm like, there's a snake in the bathroom. Just randomly, I'm like, okay, well, I don't know if there's like actually a snake because we're at a nice place, snakes aren't just going to come into the bathroom. But like something like spiritually was like there's a snake in the bathroom. So then that was the previous night and then I walk and the frog drops and I'm like, and I walk into the bathroom and I see all these ants and I'm like, what? And I'm following the ants and it's a worm, but instantly, intuitively, I'm like, that's representing the snake. And this worm, snake, worm, was dead and the ants were eating it. And... Anyway, so it was like this snake ate the frog and then the frog was like, no, I'm back alive and the snake dies. And then all these things were happening. And I'm not going to go too much further into, um, you know, it was a lot about death and rebirth. It was a lot about, you know, the snake kills the frog, but then the frog comes back and kills the snake. It was also about certain healing spaces and um, when I was sharing that with Sarah, 
because Sarah is very much connected to these other realms and projectors have access to these realms. It's how much, um, you know, everyone can go at, at different levels. I like to be grounded here and, you know, open myself up in that way. You know, I think a lot of people can, can go a bit far as well. But so I was sharing that with Sarah and I was receiving, I'm like, oh, I'm actually going to take, like, these are the steps that I can see this story within my own psyche. It was like very obviously for me to see this frog, boom, this other frog that jumped off the, the balcony, the snake eating the frog, literally, that's what was happening. I'd never seen that before. And then I was like, that night the snake died and then it was like literally being eaten by the ants. All these things, it was like, I understand, I understood what I had to do. And in that moment, we were just talking about it. So I was like, oh my gosh, look at that moon. And uh, it was the exact shape in the coffee cup. And it was just a profound moment and it will uh, impact multiple decisions throughout the year and and places I'm actually going to go and, and healing spaces that I'm actually going to go into. And So I just wanted to share, share that. Um, Another thing, you know, along those same lines, which was interesting, is I'd heard about um, there's different healing modalities, you know, and I've been interested for the last 12 years in many, many different types. Now, one is bee stings. Uh, they've been used as healing, you know, it, it, it uh, awakens our immune system when we get stung by a bee. Now, you don't want to be allergic, so. But there's a person here in Bali that has a beehive and any dead or dying bee. So it's not just like, you know, getting healthy bees. and Because when they sting you, they die. It's ones that are actually on the way out. Those ones are used. But when the stinger goes into you, it activates your immune system. And many people have healed from, you know, different things in the neck, knee. I'm not um, advising anyone to do this. It's... You know, it's, it's a unique decision and choice. But anyway, I decided to try it and I got a few bee stings on certain parts of my body, which definitely activated my immune system in a powerful way. I'm not allergic. But it was fascinating in like the unseen world of like just seeing certain things. So I'm literally, I drive like, you know, a while away on the scooter um, you know, I haven't seen Sarah for a couple of hours and she sends a photo and I look, but I don't fully open it and I, it hasn't fully loaded on WhatsApp, but I can just see she's by the pool and I'm like, oh, cool. And then I take a photo and there's actually a bee on me, you know, and the stinger and I send it to her just so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm doing the therapy. And she's like, did you see what I sent you? I'm like, no, I haven't loaded yet. And then I look and she sent it like 30 seconds before a bee had literally landed on her leg and that maybe hasn't happened, you know, in like 10 years or whatever. But at the same time, a bee was on her as a bee was on me. And I showed the, the guy that, who was doing the, the bees for me and he's like, hang on, that's, I've never heard of that. That's not possible. But just these reminders and synchronicities and as we uh, open ourselves up to these, these magical moments of life guiding us in ways far beyond our comprehension and sometimes there's these little openings of like a portal or like these little gifts or reminders or where it's like yeah that's not um that's not a coincidence life is powerfully playing through and orchestrating and the more that we can open ourselves up as projectors and ride the wave and decondition and flow in this brilliant orchestration, once again, far beyond our comprehension, uh, magic starts to open up. So I just wanted to share uh, a bit of my journey here in Bali on our honeymoon. Uh, lots of learnings, lots of teachings, lots of magic, 
lots of challenges, uh, all of it. And just deep gratitude once again to Bali, to the land here, uh, to the natives of Bali, how they move into ceremony on a daily basis, give offerings, give prayer, and spend so much time and attention doing that. And I think that's something that I can learn from seeing how much presence and care and attention and resources and time and money that they actually put into creating their offerings, giving offerings. And it's, it's beautiful. And I think that's a huge part of why Bali does hold a magical element uh, through the, the spirits here, through the land through the synchronicities it's a very potent and magical place so with that uh, thank you for listening along if you've made it this far and many blessings to you